Originally, this level was going to transition us to farm. We would go all the way through to the dance where Ellie and Dina share their first kiss. Then we would play through farm, and when Ellie plays the guitar at night, she would remember the Seth incident. So, the opening for this was a little tricky. We needed it to match at least a little what you might expect emotionally coming from prior beats, because we were already purposefully disorienting you in time and space. Remember, you just came from this huge fight. To jump straight into it would have been a little too jarring. After some back and forth, we rooted it in Ellie's nerves, calling back to her hands shaking in the theater. But this time, for a much more innocuous reason, we'll find out later. She's nervous because she has a crush on Dina, who is the only reason why she's here at the dance. Something we really wanted to do was highlight the way their lives had turned upside down since she went down this path. We had this idea of recontextualizing all of our usual gameplay mechanics that were designed for really violent ends. The workbench, door bashes, throwable weapons, and even the infected, which is my personal favorite. Peppered throughout the level are moments of levity or shared history, all the while seeing how happy and mundane they all were before her huge revenge odyssey. It is not a festival without one of these throwing games. This one, of course, uses our throwable system where you're often chucking explosive things or stunning things, but for a more wholesome purpose, although some people take this game really seriously. A fun aspect of this is if you did well, you could win a toy here. Ellie would place it in her pocket. If you had done this, you'd find the toy with JJ, the baby, later back at the farm. When we cut this, the toy made it through anyway because it was so cute. It is the same one you see on the tractor at the farm, Ollie the elephant. The makeup artist is pretty simple. It's one of those little in-game scenes we peppered in to make it feel like Ellie had roots in the town. Hallie, our writer, mentioned that in her mind, an ex-girlfriend of Ellie's tattooed her arm to cover up her scar. So we figured this might be the only time you get to see that. We wanted to hint at it and allude to it and make it feel like there had been so much more that had been happening and so much more that Ellie threw away. We use our workbench a lot to make a lot of things that kill and maim and hurt people. Here, we had the silly idea of using the same feel, hearkening back to the same animations, using the exact same UI to instead fix a drink. Like the workbench, you could pick your base and then you could add something to it. And at the time, we had some different reactions from Ellie based on how strong you chose to make the drink. Something we wanted to prototype though, before it got cut, was picking up some ingredients around to add, like a lime or maybe a bottle of someone's favorite whiskey or salt, like you were earning upgrades. We also toyed with having Ellie carry around the drink you made and occasionally sip it, psyching herself up to go talk to Dina inside because she's nervous. It got too noodly though, because she would need to keep placing it somewhere before she did anything. So it would have ended up more trouble than it was worth. This is one of my favorite sections because I think that it achieves both the slice of life aspect of Jackson while also being a stark reminder of how dark the world that they live in really, really is. To attract attention and curiosity, one of the kids was supposed to make this adorable, messed up little clicker impression and the others would giggle. We tried a version where if you got close enough, the kid might try to follow you a little before turning back. Since clickers are blind and move by echolocation, for this game of messed up tag, Ellie must close her eyes and listen for when the children give themselves away. The thought was that these kids are in relative safety. They still grow up with the dangers of clickers and runners, and all those lessons would embed themselves in the games that they play. When the festival got cut, they tried to preserve this moment and move it to the front of the game where the snowball fight is, as a tutorial. However, being in the headspace of a clicker doesn't really teach you how to deal with them. Eventually, it evolved, and they instead made the snowball fight, which was, I think, way more effective. For me, it's character illuminating that not only does Ellie know this game, she plays along. There's a familiarity with the kids that's really nice to see, especially because it's such a difference from the Ellie we see later, who has a sort of hollow normalcy that she's trying to get with JJ, but kind of fails. There's a hidden spot at the back that was just a bit of fun. It was highlighting Jackson's normalcy with something we would find in a real world. In the back, you would find teenagers finding some alone time with each other in a dark corner of a party. It was rewarding the player for peeking into a hidden corner, but ultimately redirecting them back to the festival. 
we also had versions of them smoking weed here, despite Maria's consternation, probably having gotten it from Eugene. 